We have just finished cooking pizzas in the pizza oven next to this incredible lake in Italy. And unfortunately, now it's time to start heading back to England. I've got loads of editing I need to get on with. Jim's got to go back to work. And also there's some other projects that I really want to get on with back at home, such as checking on my honeybees, because they're in the process of making lots of honey and I want to harvest that soon. I've also got to check that my cucumbers that I planted a few weeks ago haven't died. And also I've got to get on with converting my own van ready for my travels at the end of the summer. So it's probably best we hit the road now and, and go back to England. 13 hours and we'll be home. Where are we, Jim? France. And where are we heading? Home. And when do we want to be there? Now. Pasta for the sixth day in a row. Oh, it's been a long trip. But we're nearly, nearly home again. Jim, what have you done? What a week! Right, I guess I'll see you. See you soon. Oh, home sweet home. Oh. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Just stepped in the house. I've had a wash because I really needed it and I think I'm gonna cut my hair again. It's getting a bit long. One of the reasons for going on this road trip in Jim's van was so I could see what van life is like. Before I convert my own van, I thought it'd be a good idea to spend some time in my friend's van that he has been converting. And I thought it might give me some ideas, you know, give me some inspiration for how I'd like to convert my van. Yeah, I think I answered lots of questions. I realized that a van is a small space. Even Jim's van, which is a ginormous, big, high top, long wheelbase thing. Even that for two people, it still feels quite cramped and small. So I'm realizing now that my VW Caddy is going to be quite a squeeze. I've got to have a very minimal, simple 
conversion that has nothing more than it actually needs in it. I need a bed, I need some storage, and that is about it. I don't think I'm gonna manage as nice a creative look. He had an incredible wooden cladding, which he'd like burnt down to make it a really nice dark color. I really like that. And his cupboards and his woodwork, his worktop surface and his bed, they were all really nice. I'm just gonna go for very simple plywood. I've gotta keep it very minimal. I've got so little space to play with that I'm realizing it's gonna be hard to squeeze it all in. I also realized that traveling in a van is a very cost effective way to travel. Of course, that depends on whether you're actually doing lots of driving, because if you're doing lots of driving, you're gonna use up a lot of fuel. Uh, but I did some maths earlier. We spent 500 pounds on diesel. If we were to have got accommodation every night, we would have spent a whole lot more. So actually being able to live in the vehicle and, and sleep in it and use it as like a home for the trip, it saved us a lot of money. So it was a very worthwhile trip. So much fun visiting loads of different places, those different countries and seeing some incredible scenery. But um, what next? Well, I have got to get on with converting my van. I need to get it finished by the end of the summer because I've got a, another European road trip that I want to do. And also between now and the end of summer, I want to do lots of homestead style projects such as looking after my bees. I want to get some honey from my bees this year and I'd like to try and uh, jar some of it up and sell it to some of the people who watch these videos and I also want to grow lots of food in my parents garden my dad has allowed me to use his greenhouse and some of his garden space so I've got some cucumbers and also tomatoes that I want to grow let's get on with it then shall we ah <sighs> thought I'd take the car again now my plan for the car is to um, I should really try and finish the camper conversion of this little car, turn it into a proper weekend short stay car camper. So my plan is, I'm gonna finish converting the car. Once it's done, maybe test it out, use it a few times. And then, because I, I really don't need a van and a car, I think I might sell the car. I spent an awful lot on the van and I need to somehow pay back for that. So nice driving this car though. So smooth and quiet compared to the van. And the sound system is way better. But I don't need two vehicles. Who would be up for buying a VW Polo car camper? Let me know in the comments. I have just arrived at my parents' house so I can check on my bees and check on me vegetables. It's time to do some beekeeping. Now, my bees in the garden have been very busy the last few weeks because it's been really good weather and they've been bringing in lots of nectar and turning it into honey. When I checked the bees last week or the week before, the honey box that I had on the hive was quite heavy, which means it's been filling up quickly. And I need to keep giving them more space so that if they fill up that box, they can start work on more frames and start filling up another box with honey. So I've got these two boxes here. They're called supers, honey supers. Now I learned recently that super comes from the word superfluous. Super, superfluous? I don't have a clue if that's how you say it. It's spelt like superfluous. And it means unnecessary. The super, which goes on top of the box on the bottom, is where the bees store honey which they don't really need. They store unnecessary honey, which is extra honey that I can take off as a beekeeper. But I've got these two boxes, and you don't just put the boxes on top, you need to make frames which then slot into the box. And then the bees draw out the comb on the frames and then store the honey in it. In this box is just an assortment of pieces of wood. It's like a IKEA flat pack furniture, it's just bits of wood and also this, which is, it's called wax foundation. These go in the frames and then the bees draw their comb from this wax. So it's like giving the bees a head start. So I'm going to get to work and use a hammer and some nails to put together these frames. And then the 
foundation wax then slides in. There is a honey super frame. What the bees will do is they will use this wax foundation to draw out cells and then they will store the nectar in there which will then turn into honey. I've basically just got to do 23 or 24 of these, fill up those two boxes and then we can put them on the beehives. Well, it took me about two hours, but I've finally got two full boxes of frames made up. And we're gonna put them on the beehives. So that box there, that's the first super that I put on last week and they've already done so much work and they've drawn out loads of the comb. So I'm gonna put another one on. This is not drawn out. This is just the foundation. The drawn out comb looks like that. You see how the comb is like, they've built loads of comb from the foundation. And this one is actually quite heavy. I can feel that they're storing quite a lot of nectar in there. Keep this hive green. The hive is growing. Now let's check that one. Oh my goodness, it's full of bees. And from what I've learned, you want to give them space before they actually need more space. You don't want them to ever be in too small of a hive, otherwise they will try and swarm again. I wanna see what one of these frames looks like. Oh wow. Wow, look at all that honey. I think they're storing pollen up there as well. That sort of coloured stuff near the bottom of the frame. But yeah, that is incredible. Wow, so heavy. So we're going to give this hive another box as well. There you go bees, loads more space to store loads more honey. Cucumbers just grow ridiculously fast. I grew them last year and I ended up with like kilograms and kilograms of them. This year, hopefully it'll be the same. And they taste really good in sandwiches. Mmm, very good. And tomorrow's job is to pot up all these cucumbers. All of these should turn into ones like those plants. And uh, as you can see, they're kind of going a bit yellow and that's because they have really grown out of the size of their pot. The roots are all coming out the bottom. And I guess they're running low on nutrients. So I'm gonna pot all these up into big pots, put them around this greenhouse where it's really hot and humid. And then hopefully we'll have these all summer long. Talking of gardening, my dad was saying how he needs to mow the lawn. I'm gonna mow my hair. Right, that's a bit of a weird way of saying it. They're so cool how they like vine and create these tendrils they cling onto things with. Plants are awesome. But since the whole COVID thing happened, this is how I've cut my hair. I bought one of these, it cost me 30, 40 quid. And you've got these things, which are very important if you don't want to go completely bald. These are the attachments. Once I completely forgot to put the attachment on and I shaved it all off. Oh no. Are you serious? What on earth did you do? But I normally go for 
Well, I, I did go for a three mil last time, but I think that was a bit short. I'm gonna go for a six, a six mil. I know it doesn't look very eloquent or controlled, but it does the job. You've got to use my camera screen as a mirror. That's your sort of guess. Mmm, nice. Quite a few people have been saying, when will you have honey to sell? Well, it says here in, my, in the section of this book about harvesting honey, capped honey is said to be ripe. So, capped means that it's capped over with those wax cappings that you saw. So some of the honey in my hive was ripe. And what it means by ripe is having a moisture level of around 18%. If the moisture content is too high, then it says here naturally occurring sugar tolerant yeasts will start off fermentation. So it'll basically go off. So the answer to people asking when can you buy some of my honey, I don't know, maybe it could be only a month away. It looks like it's getting close. Something I need to learn before I give away or sell any of my honey is how to extract the honey. So that's basically how you get the honey off of the frames and into jars. And that's what I'm going to read about now. I'm off to the pub to see a friend and I'll catch you tomorrow. Back in the van, I'm doing kind of a side-by-side -side comparison recently driving the car and the van and the car and the van and the car and the van just getting a feel for whether i should sell the car how much use is of it is it to me because i don't need two vehicles but the car is so nice it's nippy and small and you can fit into tight places and i should bring my bin in one second the van is a lot more practical for carrying stuff and also obviously sleeping in, it'll be a lot nicer for that. Let me know what you think. Should I sell the car? Should I not? Anyway, my job now is to go to a garden center, pick up some compost, because I need to pot on my cucumber plants. Oh, and I'm so excited, because tonight I'm going to see one of my favorite music artists in London. I've got these baby cucumber plants, which are looking a little bit sad and yellow because they're probably running out of nutrients. And I'm gonna put them in these big pots. I'd like them all to be as big as this bottom one, but I don't have any others. Nice big pot full of fresh nutrient filled compost. And hopefully these cucumbers will grow into big, big plants. put the biggest one in this pot. This is a Socrates F1 variety. Don't know if I said that right, but that's what it said on the packet of seeds. Now cucumbers can be planted. Oh wow, you see that? It's filled up the container with its roots. But cucumbers can grow roots out of their stem. So you can actually plant them quite deep. So I can make this hole quite big, pop it in, and then fill the compost around the plant. Now, I'm not a pro gardener. I don't really know what I'm doing. So please, give me some tips and gardening advice in the comments. There's one plant, Dan. 10 more to go. Gardening, gardening, gardening. I enjoy gardening. I used to find gardening really boring, but now I just love it. If you can grow something that you can then eat, it's just the coolest thing ever. One of these bags cost five pounds 30. So this cucumber here has probably four pounds worth of compost inside of it. To get five pounds worth of cucumbers, so a cucumber from Tesco, one pound. So we grow five cucumbers from that plant and it's been worth it in terms of like money. And also it will be tastier and fresher and nicer than any other cucumber in the world.
all the cucumber plants are going to go in this greenhouse because cucumbers like it really humid and warm and in here it's like it's like a rainforest right we need to water everything the plants need water right that is garden stuff finished i'm looking forward to waiting for these vegetables to grow and then hopefully we'll have unlimited supply of cucumbers van conversion series is coming soon i promise Cheers for watching everyone, I'll catch you next time. I'm off to London to see my favourite music artist in the world. <laughs>